Right. Hello, everybody. Um, slightly low numbers, probably uh, others will turn up hopefully over time, but wanted to start the webinar today because this will be available on demand for those who can't make it. So I want to make the full use uh, of the hour that we have. So my name is James Cope. Today we're going to be talking about the AIM uh, SmartyCam 3 Sport. Uh, and more importantly, how to configure it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to share my screen and let me just pop that up um, for everyone to see. And you should, uh, somebody give me a thumbs up uh, in the chat box if you don't mind that you can see this, um, which will be good. And we'll get going. Let's see if everyone's got it, access to this. Um, hopefully someone will be able to see it. Yes, thanks, Roger, I appreciate that. So. Um, Today's presentation is going to focus on um, setting up a SmartyCam 3 Sport. Now, uh, this is a new device uh, from AIM. It's, uh, I did see from AIM Shop that uh, there's a new stock uh, available to be, uh, to be ordered here uh, in the UK and I think across much of Europe and uh, many of the international markets. And I also know that it's really available, uh, I believe, in the US market as well. So uh, it's something that I managed to get my hands on. Um, I would probably say a few weeks ago, I managed to uh, start working with one of these, attached it to the same network that I had um, for my existing SmartyCam 2.1, which is the uh, little bullet camera that I have on my Formula Ford. But I put a bit of video uh, uh, up online in a few places for people to be able to see a side-by-side -side type of comparison. But to be able to get there, I had to be able to set up the camera itself. And so that's what we're going to focus on today. So things that we're going to cover, we're going to look at configuring via the device settings. We're going to have a go at being able to see if you can follow what I'm doing on the actual device. Don't worry, we're not going to use this camera up here. Uh, I've got a second camera set up, so hopefully we'll be able to see that working. Then we're going to look at uh, once we've um, first run using the micro SD card, once we've run it in the device once, um, how we configure and we work that out in Race Studio 3. Then we're going to look at configuring your overlay, which I think is, the, I, to be honest, one of the most enjoyable parts uh, of setting up a Smarty Cam itself. And I think in many instances, uh, Smarty Cams themselves are, uh, are wonderfully um, versatile. You can set up any configuration for a particular um, sort of application that you have. So we're going to have a look at that. Then we're going to talk about uploading all of them back onto the Smarty Cam itself, because one of the things that's different or the behavior that I have that is different is that with older Smarty Cams, I would have plugged them directly into my PC. I would have hit transmit from Ray Studio 3, sent that information through to the Smarty Cam itself, and then updated it that way. Whereas this um, particular device, the Smarty Cam 3 Sport, uses a little micro SD, which uh, we configure. Then we set up all of the application on the SD card itself. Then we put the SD card back in the device and update it from there. And anyone's familiar with updating, for example, the firmware on a camera or something like that. That's a very similar sort of uh, experience. Um, and then the last thing we're going to talk about is some of the advanced Smarty Cam configurations, but we're not going to really delve into that today because I think that's uh, a conversation for a very small percentage of people who are going to be using the Smarty Cam. But you can do a lot more with this one than you can with the others. And so I just wanted to be able to sort of give a quick sort of recap as to where we are with the device itself, because um, it's uh, a fantastic improvement in many areas over the previous version. And I personally have started to experience this myself. Um, the areas which I believe have made a significant difference are in the areas of the global shutter and CMOS sensor that you've got mentioned here. The uh, movement uh, of the graphics themselves um, seems to have been improved uh, quite considerably. At the end of uh, the uh, uh, event or today's webinar, I will actually show inside a ratio Studio 3 analysis uh, the camera running side by side, so you can have a little bit of look uh, at what that's actually showing you. Other enhancements beyond many of the aspects that we're seeing here is the fact that it's now 1080p, so you get nicer resolution. And that's not necessarily just a nicer resolution that exists with the actual camera itself, but also the overlays that you put on the uh, on the device itself. So that's a really nice way of being able to have a look at uh, uh, that particular aspect. The unit that I have um, is uh, is a great demonstration of a device that has had um, a bit of best way to describe it, sort of a sort of a, a bit of a knock. It's it's uh, had a few knocks. It's been used uh, when uh, the AIM folks sent it over to me. Said, "What would you like? Do you want a new one, or do you want one that's uh, that's that's available here?" I said, "Look, I'm 
absolutely delighted to use anything that you send me. So they sent me one that's been involved in a, uh, a, a collision with a go-kart and actually had rolled. Yet at the same time, you'll see from the camera footage that it's absolutely fantastic. So the durability of these new units is fantastic. They are absolutely, um, it feels like bulletproof in many respects, which also goes for the glass on the front. And I don't know if any of you who've experienced a Smarty Cam and have it outside your vehicle, which is it doesn't matter how small that little bit of uh, screen is, you will always hit a fly. It doesn't matter how it happens in every instance that you do, but uh, you will actually hit a fly the size of the screen at times. And so it's important that it's not just a fly that you hit, it might be a stone or a chip. So there's other things that are on here that are nice, but what we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna talk about setting it up because I think it's one of the things that I've received a number of questions uh, on uh, my channel, a number of questions from people who actually write in the comments or they send me emails through the website. So I think it's important uh, that we have a look at that. So we're gonna get into a live demo. Now, to be able to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm going to switch my camera. I'm actually gonna switch on, excuse me, I'm gonna disappear from the screen. I'm gonna switch on the Smarty Cam 3. And uh, as we do that, what I'm actually gonna do is uh, I'm going to make sure that uh, people can see that uh, I'm the one who's speaking. Make sure that it's clear that that's me who's uh, uh, obviously having a bit of a Zoom moment just there. Um, just uh, rec recognizing that uh, you can see what uh, what's on screen. You should be able to see me. And what I'm going to do is switch cameras. So hopefully uh, you should be able to see full screen uh, of the cameras. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here and I'm going to switch over. So now, hopefully, you should see the Smarty Cam 3. So give me a thumbs up. Is that full screen for everyone just in the chat box, just to make sure, um, make sure that that's the case. Hopefully you should see full screen on that one. If you can't, give me a shout. Otherwise we're gonna keep uh, cracking on with this particular demonstration. So this is the Smarty Cam 3 Sport. Now I've got this camera set up so you can actually see the screen. You can see my uh, big hand that gets in the way or and it looks big on the on the camera. And we're going to have a look at this. Now, this is the device that I've turned on the first time. Now, the first thing we're actually going to need to do that a lot of people um, you know, may find to be different is that we have to actually insert an SD card. And so uh, um, thank you, Roger, for confirming. Um, in many respects, the SD card going into the camera basically configures the SD card to represent what the device is itself. And so I'm just going to click to keep that display uh, from timing out. And I'm actually gonna stick the SD card in the side. Now, as I do that, one of the things, always uh, just like putting a USB into power, always put things in the wrong way around. It's just uh, what happens. Now, as I put that into the device itself, um, it will generally sort of work out uh, what's happening. Uh, it flashed up quite quickly on screen, but it said the words SD card ready. Uh, this one's still figuring out. Usually what happens, you will see just up here, uh, on the actual device around about here, it will tell you over time once your SD card is inserted, how much space is actually available on that card itself. What it's doing at that point is it's actually configuring the SD card to be used with that particular camera. Now that's useful as we go through starting to have a look at it. So that's the first thing that we want to have a look at. Before we go anywhere else and we start looking at uh, other sorts of aspects, I wanted to be able to mention that. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to switch back to me um, by doing this. Hopefully it should come back to me. There I am back here. Um, the wonders of technology is here. And I'm actually going to share my screen because I'm going to bring up Race Studio 3. Because once you've configured the SD card in the device, and I'm going to open up Race Studio 3 here. Hold on a second. Let me just uh, share my screen. Uh, where are we? Zoom. This is the conversation. Click on share screen. Next one I'm going to do is I'm now going to share the Race Studio 3. So this is Race Studio 3. Now, in many instances, if I plugged in a Smarty Cam, Typically what you would see is these two little arrows would have a little bit of green illuminated in them. It's one of the things that you generally tend to see um, when you're using the uh, uh, any of the devices that are connected to Ray Studio 3. But if you plug in an SD card, anyone who's got experience with a memory module, for example, when you put the SD card in to download the data, this doesn't necessarily illuminate. But if you want to be able to configure your Smarty Cam 3, this is the first place you're going to go to. And what you're going to do when you do that is you're going to see that the SD card, and it just so happens for the wonders of demonstration, it's very much sort of, here's one I made earlier. You can see that the Smarty Cam 3 has shown up here, and you can see that this is the SD card that's added to uh, the side of uh, my particular um, uh, PC. So this is the SD card that I've run in this particular area. Now, 
On this SD card, there are other pieces of information that are here. Right now, there shouldn't be any tracks on there because I haven't added any tracks at all that are there. And interestingly, when you do this the first time, many of you may require to update the firmware on your particular device as well. And if that happens to be uh, an option comes up, you would prompted to be able to do that. But today we're gonna have a look at a few things in terms of being able to get data onto the SD card and then get it into the actual device itself. So I think that's gonna be an important sort of component. To do that, we're actually gonna to have to go through to a point of configuration. So to do that, many of us may be familiar with configurations, especially if we're setting this up, unless we're using this as a standalone unit, and this is the first time you've actually got a Smarty Cam, then chances are you're gonna set it up in the configuration. I'm gonna click here. And before, I probably noticed I've got a manual collection. I don't know how many people actually know you can do that, but you can set up different collections in any area uh, of Ray Studio 3. Interestingly, this will mimic what you can actually use in the analysis. And so I've just set up a manual collection of configurations today for the purposes of demonstration. So before I get into the Smarty Cam, the most important thing that we want to be able to think about is we want to be able to talk about um, the configuration of what is often referred to as the Smarty Cam stream. This is the data that is sent from your actual LogRo device. So you might have a Solo 2DL, you might have in this instance an Evo 4S, which I'm actually using here. You might have any of the dashes, all sorts of configuration. The only thing this really doesn't necessarily apply to, uh, I would argue in many instances, is things like the, you know, the Solo 2, which is more just a logger. But if you're in a situation where you're connecting a SmartyCam 3 to an existing CAN network, and by say CAN network, connected AIM network, uh, of devices, you want to make sure that you're sending the right information for the Smarty Cam to be able to work with. So before we even set up the Smarty Cam, area number one, configure your network to be able to send the signal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up um, this uh, Evo 4S. Now, if you're wondering what RF07 means, that's just the designation of the type of Formula 4 that I have. I have an RF88, which was made in 1988, and I have an RF07, which was made in 2007. And so that's just how I remember what the configurations are for this particular device. Don't worry, yours will be called something slightly different. So if I double click here, um, it's important that uh, many of us know what this looks like. If you're not sure about setting this up, we have got tutorials on the uh, AIMSHOP YouTube page uh, that will help you find this information, as well as if you're interested, you can also find it on my YouTube channel, as well as many of the other channels from AIM2. But this, um, uh, as part of the webinars we've done in the past, has been setting up uh, your Smarty Cam stream. So we're not going to dwell too much on it today. But if we go to this particular tab here, we'll notice there's something called a Smarty Cam stream. Now, for many of us, this is the stream that we're very familiar with. And what we do is we map these particular variables, which we use for the Smarty Cam in its configuration with the actual channel that's coming into our particular device. So this represents the channel that I have connected to the RPM. This represents GPS speed that's coming in from my GPS sensor. Uh, this calculated gear happens to be a math channel that I've got set up here, which you can see is calculator gear. And so all of these are set up ahead of time to be able to make sure that data is being sent. Now, I have heard from people saying, can I have, do I have to have just a Smarty Cam 2 or a Smarty Cam 3? Well, you can have both. And I know you can have both because I asked a couple of people who are on this webinar before I did it myself and they said yes. Uh, and then I experimented myself and you can have both. As long as you've got an empty port where you can plug your Smarty Cam 3 into, you can set this up. And so um, one of the things you'll notice if I click on this Smarty Cam 3, two things happen. The first is this list gets bigger. Now it didn't get much bigger, but you'll notice that one, two, three, four, five, all the way to 14, and then it jumps to 17 and 18. That's because on a Smarty Cam 3, you've got two new channels uh, to be able to use, which are lateral acceleration uh, and inline acceleration, which are really useful variables to be able to get that representation of G-force information to be able to use that in your setup. That's one of the things uh, that's here. The reason that's here is you can also configure it um, to be able to uh, decide where you want that particular channel to come in here. The other thing you'll also notice with the Smarty Cam 3 in terms of the feed, now this is something that I will happen to say is more of the advanced features that we may sort of touch on at the end just a little bit. But if you click here, you can actually create your own stream from your network. Now, if that's gone straight over your head, don't worry, it went straight over my head as well. And I need to talk to people far smarter than I am to be able to figure it out. But one of the big critiques that has always existed with the Smarty Cam is you're limited 
to what these particular parameters are set here to be able to get that data fed into your Smarty Cam. So if you want to see something like a math channel you've configured or a particular setup where you've created your own ECU variables or your own uh, setup in terms of, of uh, channels, now you have the option of being able to do that. But for the purposes of today's demonstration, and I would say for the majority of us who use this, this is the uh, setup you're going to have. So that's it. That's all you need to do. Make sure this is set up appropriately, but don't worry necessarily if uh, you know, you're, know you oh, well, I've got Smarty Cam and it wasn't clicked on three when I hit save and transmitted it. Doesn't matter. The one thing that I will caveat here is that you should make sure that your unit, in this case, my RF, uh, my Evo 4S, your logger or your dash, has been updated to the very latest firmware, so it's ready to be able to talk to the SmartyCam 3 Sport. That's a very important component to make sure everything in your network is as refreshed and updated as you can to be able to work with all the new elements of the software. That's the first thing. So point number one done, setting up your SmartyCam stream. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and configure a uh, SmartyCam 3 Sport. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on new, and I'm going to get an option. Now, it shows up here for me because it was the last configured device that I had. But if you don't have that because you haven't done it yet, all you need to do is to scroll down to the bottom of this page and you'll find this as an option available. Now, again, if this doesn't show up in your instance of Race Studio 3, then it means that you're not do, you're using the very latest version of Race Studio 3. And to make sure you are, all I'd recommend you do is hit this little cloud icon in the top right hand side. And if you click there, it won't allow me to do that because I've got this box open, but it'll make sure that you've updated to the very latest. It's also where you can go in and get all your firmware. So if I click here, for example, this is where you get your latest version of Race Studio 3. And here's all the firmware of which I would recommend you keep checking the firmware in the Smarty Cam 3 Sport, because in the last week, there have been two updates to the Smarty Cam 3 Sport um, that I've witnessed as well. So it's a very important thing to be able to have a look at. So once you've done and updated all of your aspects there, um, it's important that we think about configuring your device. So we're going to go back into here. We're going to click on new. We're going to scroll down. We're going to click on SmartyCam 3, and we can call it anything we want. So in this instance, we're going to call it SmartyCam 3 Sport uh, AIM Webinar, because why wouldn't you? And uh, you can click on OK. Now what that's going to do is it's going to take you into the instance where you're going to start configuring the page for your particular item. Now it's important at this point uh, that we think about a few things here which are really important. Now, the first is how are you going to use this device? For many of us, and for nearly every instance that I've seen of people using a Smarty Cam, it is connected to a CAN network or a connected AIM network and is being used in this instance is connected to a master. However, just like with previous versions, you can use it as a standalone item. So if you're configuring it as a standalone, it means you're going to get the channels that are being fed into the Smarty Cam, which in this instance will come from potentially something like a GPS module that you've got plugged into the Smarty Cam. So you can see the GPS channels that are available. But because today we're using this connected to my Evo 4S and we're going to set it up for how I want it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on connected to master. And you'll notice that down here, notice how the channels change. Here, we have standalone. So we see something that disappears. And what disappears is this thing called the CAN protocol. The CAN protocol is where we set up, going back here, this. So right now we're using the CAN protocol that's coming from AIM, but if we set up our own one, that would be where the data is coming from. But we're setting up the one from AIM, and so the CAN protocol is coming in from AIM itself. And you can see that here. This is your option if I click here. This just gives you an idea of this is the stream that's coming in, which is the AIM stream, but I do have the option of selecting another one if I wanted to set it up, which I don't have one. So I don't need to worry about it. So we've got that. And next thing we want to be able to do is to potentially set up our overlay. So area number two, setting up your overlay in the Smarty Cam 3 Sport. Now, few things immediately that some of us who've got a Smarty Cam will be very familiar with on the screen. We'll see the opportunity to be able to bring in these lovely graphics. We'll see the image that's available here, and we'll see the channels down here. Not too dissimilar, I would say, from setting up a Smarty Cam 2. But there's one thing that I turn on almost immediately when I'm setting these up, is if I right click on this screen, notice there's something here that says Show Grid. This gives you this grid that overlays on the page, which means when you're lining up your particular objects, 
it allows you to be able to place them with accuracy. And I'm actually going to show you that if you do it wrong, some of them are slightly out of place. And if you do it right, you'll have a nice sort of vision and view over it. And you won't be thinking, well, that's slightly out of place and distracting you from actually what you're looking at, which is the marvels of your driving. So we can also change some other variables. We can change the background to give us a different representation of um, in a car, for example. We could say, OK, well, let's see what it looks like if it's mounted on a go-kart. That, again, is very useful. And here's a caveat I would say. We've done a tutorial on setting up the Smarty Cam itself. And what we said during that is be very mindful where you put your graphics, because you don't want to put your graphics, which actually takes away from your ability to be able to see what you're looking at. And that's very important. For example, if I grabbed this right here and I put it right here, that would be the most idiotic place to put that on the screen because it takes all of the attention away from what you're actually looking at, which is the driving. <coughs> Excuse me. The data itself should be a complement to understanding what you're doing as a driver, whereas you've got a ton of empty space up here. So you want to be able to have a look at it up there. So that's really important. And you can change the background to represent what you're looking at. If you don't want an object, for example, just right click on it and click on delete. So if I click on background again, we could say, for example, I want to be able to use uh, the one we're using at the beginning. Interestingly, we've always had the one where we're driving around a speedway. Um, but let's say, for example, we're using one in a GT car driving around, I'm guessing this could be something like, I don't know, probably, yeah, I don't know, somebody may know where that is. It looks like probably somewhere in Italy. Um, and so uh, what we want to do in this instance is we want to set it up. So this gives us an idea in terms of how we want to set this up. Now, many of you may be saying, well, hold on a second, that doesn't really represent my car. It doesn't matter. So click on here, click on new custom background, and you can bring in your own background, which may be an image or a picture of the dash of your car. So you can place things where you want to be able to do so. So then what we want to do is we want to set this up. So we can set it up in many ways. And there's all these wonderful new graphics that you can click on with it here. There's even custom made dashes that you can put in as well. Now, one of my favorites, which I played around with, was you can actually bring in what a Solo 2 DL would look like uh, on the screen as well, which uh, is nice, or a Micron S um, or 5S, which is nice. I actually have one of these set up, which I'll show you um, at the end of the demo. You've just got your regular dashes. I think this sort of represents, I'm guessing, maybe a Mustang. Uh, I'm not sure, but they all give you a good idea in terms of what they are. This looks very much like a Porsche. Um, and so you get a really good idea of what the clusters would look like. But what we're going to do is we're going to set one up um, and we're going to set it up just because I've set it up this way, how I would set up my vehicle. So in this instance, it would be uh, a Formula Ford. And so what I'm going to do is I want to see information. Um, so I'm going to sort of drop this in here. Um, and it's going to give me an option of being able to decide where that's coming from. Now, this is where it gets interesting. The engine RPM is mapped to RPM, and you can see the aim stream that's coming from my Evo 4S gives me the channel, which is engine RPM, and I've already mapped that to the RPM that's coming in from my vehicle. So that's the feed. Now, if, an, if a Formula Ford engine rose to 1400 RPM, something's very wrong. And so what we want to make sure is this is fairly represented in terms of what we want. So we can scroll in here and we can change this to a more realistic 8,000 RPM, which I have to say, if it reaches 8,000 RPM, something's very wrong. But that's a fairer representation in terms of where the band would be that is there. Now, in the new version, we have the option of changing some of the variables if we want to change the font and the colors that are there to be able to move this around as we want to be able to see it. The next thing with speed that we want to do is we want to change this to miles an hour. I'm happy about that. Everyone thinks here in the UK we use kilometers an hour, which we don't use miles an hour. Um, and so uh, in many instances, we'll leave that there. But um, one of the things it's saying participants can now see the application. Are you all still sh seeing what I'm sharing? Just a quick yes would be nice in the box. Yep, all good. Thank you. Zoom gives you the horror messages that you've been talking for 20 minutes and no one's seen what you're looking at before. And so thanks, Roger, for that. So um, what we're going to do there is going to leave this on GPS speed, but we don't need 160. We'll go 120. Even though Formula 4 goes more than 120, this is a more representative band in terms of where you are. You've got your miles an hour, which I could change into a decimal if I wanted. Although I'm not sure if I really care that I'm doing 121.1 or 121.2. 121 is fine for me, so I'm going to leave it on one decimal. So that's set up. And the last thing is gear. And if you remember, that's a calculated gear, so we'll have that set up there. Next thing we may want to bring in is an accelerometer. And we're just going to drop it here. And this is where the grid comes in useful, because if you're somebody like me who's a bit of a perfectionist who loves things being exactly in the right place, um, you can align it up 
and drop it in where you need it to be. This will just give you the data you need and you can change the variables that you want. So if you want one decimal place here, that's a fair representation of what you're looking at. Now, so far, this is not too dissimilar to what we would have done in uh, a Smarty Cam 2. So you're like, oh, is there anything new? Well, apart from the wonderful new graphics, there's some things which I absolutely love that are new. And so let me just show you a few of those. Now, what we're going to do here is we want to bring in a few other variables. So I'm going to put lap time up here, but I'm also going to bring in another lap time, which you can bring in here. Uh, and I'm just going to drop it in here. I'm going to use the grid. I'm just going to drop it there. And I've got to do it again. You're like, oh, how many of these do you really want? Well, let me show you why I'm setting that up. So here is where we start to be able to bring in some of the new features of the new software, which uh, and the new item that we like, seeing as they're not quite lined up. So I'll probably go about there. See, I've got to stop doing this. Otherwise, this will be the worst demo of the world while I work for millimeters in terms of setting this up. Well, this is where you can start bringing in some additional channels that you didn't have in the previous version. And one of the ones that I love is being able to bring in the channels that we would have been very comfortable with um, if we had a little dash on the screen. Now, many of us love watching a predictive time. Many of us love watching and being able to look at the plus minus in terms of how we're doing as a lap. But it's always frustrating people that you haven't easily, and I have been some hacks that people have used to be able to try and get that on screen. But one of the things that I've always loved is the ability to be able to, well, wanted to be able to see it on screen easily. So I'm going to click on this thing that says lap channels. And here I can say that is the lap time. That's the last lap time I did. That's the lap that we're on. But now we get the opportunity of putting in here best lap time, and we have the opportunity now of the thing that's different. These aren't any different. This, however, is much different. So now I can do plus minus the test lap time and be able to bring that in. And so all of a sudden, I can now add a new component, which I have to say, even though this is a configuration overlay rather than necessarily the hardware itself, this update to the software has been such a huge boost in terms of being able to analyze your data and video together if you've got a representation of how you were doing on that lap. So, oh, wow, I broke a bit later for that corner. And all of a sudden, you see this completely change. And you're like, wow, that made a material impact on what was going on. And we'll talk about that maybe in some of the demos later. A few other things that we may want to put on here, um, which may be in this instance, let's throw a track map on here uh, that is here. Let's also throw in the logo down here we pop in there and there we go that's it we configured how we want it to be now we can add loads on here we can take stuff off um in fact i'm going to add one more thing that people are always very interested in which is okay well what if i've got the ability to be able to see um my throttle trace for example well on here you're not seeing what you saw in the previous version in terms of brake and throttle or throttle and brake um so what you have to do here is you have to build those and so to do that, what you can do is you hit this thing called the barrel graph and you can drop this in. So let's just pop that one in there. That's the barrel graph. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to nominate that this channel is not set. I'm going to go into my CAN protocols. I'm going to find down here. I'm going to find, let me see where it is, throttle position. I'm going to pick this up. It's going to turn into a hand. I'm going to drag it over and I'm going to drop it there. And it's going to now say this is your throttle position. I'm going to change the decimal down to one, um, which is just going to give me a representation again. It's really nice to know that I was at 97.3% throttle, but 97% is close enough for me because I'm not going to have that much accuracy, so to speak, in relation to my foot itself. And I can also vary, depending on where it is now, on my car, for example, uh, based on the way that I need to reconfigure the sensor, it doesn't fully open, so it goes to about 97%. So I can just change it so that this bar here represents a fair representation of the fact that it goes to 97% or something like that. So. That's all I need to do, and I'm done. Now, you may be saying, OK, um, uh, what happens now? Now, in previous versions, I would have done this. I would have clicked on Save. I would have plugged my Smarty Cam into my PC, and I would have hit Transmit. Now, we haven't got that here. What we have, however, is we have the SD card connected. So all I need to do is hit Transmit, and that has now sent that configuration to the SD card, which is really important. So that's the first thing I want to be able to do. So that's setting up your overlay which I think is really important to be able to make sure that we're all comfortable with that particular variable. Now, a few other things that we may want to think about on this page. Um, some people like to know uh, things like parameters. What does this mean? Well, this isn't going to work if it's in connected to master mode, but if you're using a standalone, this just sets when the system starts to record. And I do get a lot of questions. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but have you ever got to the point where you had your 
start recording data when speed is above 20 miles an hour because you're trying to set it so that it doesn't trigger the video when you're in the paddock. However, the problem with that that I've identified is that if you're in the UK like I am or parts of Europe where a standing start is more commonplace, it means that oftentimes you don't get the start of the race because zero to 20, you have to wait till it hits 20 miles an hour before it actually starts recording. So you get a split second of time that doesn't catch the actual start while the system triggers. So it's important if you're using it as standalone to be able to understand this, but we're not doing it. We're actually gonna say connected to master because that's already set up here. If you're ever wondering what the parameters are on my vehicle, it is when RPM is greater than 3000 RPM and miles an hour is set at 20. So I haven't actually updated this one. This one would actually not fully record the start. And so it's important that we uh, we look at this. And so, in fact, no, I have changed this one. It says any, which is important anyway. That's a conversation for a different day. So we set that up. So that's all available, which is great. We've transmitted it and it's ready to go. There's a couple of other things that we want to do before we get back to the SD card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and I'm going to work on a, a few other aspects. Now, if you want to be able to use this as a standalone item and you're connecting it to a GPS module, um, it means you need to be able to put tracks on this. And if you click here right now, there are no tracks available here. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to go to this area here. I'm just going to go to Track Manager, and it will load up the tracks. And you can see that my connected device is here. And what I'll need to do is I'll need to find the tracks. And so let's say I'm going to do one just because it will make the way that I do the next part of the demo easier. If I did 4,000, it might take a bit longer. And so let's say, for example, I choose one of my favorite tracks, the UK Castle Coop. And so you can see that here's the track. All I need to do is grab that, drag it, and drop it. It will transmit it, and it's put it on the SD card. Again, that's really important to be able to identify. There's many other ways of doing that. But if I go back here, you'll notice now that the track is available. The last thing I also want to make sure is updated on this particular device is the firmware. If your little cog doesn't show up here, the little two arrows, if you click on here, this will take you to the update where you can download firmware and you can download um, uh, updates to the software. If I click on update device, if I click here, we'll notice that the device has been updated. But if it isn't, it'll say update the device here. What that will allow you to do is, again, update the firmware onto the SD card as well so you can load it onto the device. And that's, I have to say, if you do those three things, tracks, if you need them, firmware, if you need it, and configuration that you definitely need, that's all you need to do in Race Studio 3 about being able to configure the Smarty Cam 3 Sport. The next part is when we get into updating the device itself. And so I'm going to click out of this. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second. You're going to see me on screen, hello everyone, um, which is there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to transition this back over to the device itself. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to click on the EOS webcam YouTube. Sorry, you don't know I'm clicking on that bit. <laughs> it's just clicked on my other camera. And we're back at the Smarty Cam. So you can see my thumbs there, and I'm going to click on that. I'm just going to let it load. And while I do, I'm going to go to get the SD card out of my, um, in fact, let me take the SD card out of this one, because that was for demonstration purposes. Notice it's just come out there. I'm going to go and get the SD card out of my PC that will show you what happens next. Right, so you can see the uh, item and the uh, Smarty Cam Street Sport is loading right now. There's no SD card that's in it, so I'm just going to pop one in. I'm just going to put this in the right way this time, fingers crossed, which I have. And it's going to read the card now in terms of being able to set up. Now, nothing's happening. Interestingly, the default, I don't have a mouse anymore, so I'm going to have to use my actual finger. The default for the configuration here, and it's not touch screen, so I can just touch it gently here is to put on that sort of Porsche overlay. Now, I don't know if this is default on all Smarty Cam 3 Sports, but it's the one that came in mind. Now, you notice it said SD check there. Once it's done that, it's read the SD card that I put in, and now we're ready to start doing the update to the device. So what we need to do is we need to follow these little arrows here. Now, what's brilliant is if you notice that this one is a triangle, this one's an X, but next to it, there's a zero. And that's going to be useful because the zero there is a two second press, whereas the X is an instantaneous test uh, a, a press, which means that you get three buttons out of two. In fact, the full power off is also full down, so you really get four out of two. So what we're going to do is we're going to click here and we're going to click on menu. And notice we go to the settings uh, that are here. What we're going to do is we're going to scroll down 
So we're going to click on the X button to go down and we're going to click on update. Notice I'm going to click select button there. Now here are the options to update. And remember, I said there were three things that you want to be able to add on here. The first is you want to be able to make sure your firmware is updated. The next thing is the configuration and the last thing is track. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down by clicking on the X button and we're going to go to configuration. And this is the overlay that we just set up. So I'm going to click on select here by hitting this little uh, triangle here and it's going to load the configuration which is on the SD card. Now, um, if I had the powers of the internet and everything, I'd be able to fast forward this in an edit and say some moments later, and this would work on this. But typically you'll find this takes, and I found this probably takes, you know, a good few seconds to be able to do. 30 seconds is usually a representative time. But what it's doing is it's reading the SD card, taking the configuration off the card and uploading that into the camera. And so this is how you update the device. And once it's done it for uh, the configuration, we can do it for tracks. We're not going to do it for firmware because that takes the longest in terms of where we are. But that's one of the most important things that we're going to have a look at. And so chances are, for the purposes of demonstration, this is going to take uh, ages. <laughs> there we go. As if by magic. There we are. That's good. And so it's done. So it's uploaded the configuration. So if I click on this X button that is here and I hold it down two seconds and then I hold it down again, it takes me back to the original menus. I hold it down again. But one of the things you can notice on here, and I don't know if you can see it, I'm going to see if a pen shows up better in terms of a pointer. You can see here that, have you noticed that the configuration that's on the screen is now that configuration that we all just set up together and sent to that particular SD card. So you notice that that configuration has taken. If we want to be able to repeat that, so you can see me doing that again, I'm going to do it, but this time I'm going to do it in tracks. Don't worry, with tracks it takes much less time because I've chosen one. Um, and I'm going to click on select. This time, I'm going to click the X button to go down. I'm going to click on tracks. And it's just going to load the tracks that are on there. Now, I put one track on there, so it took no time at all to update. Now, remember, if you're connected to a, uh, an AIM network, don't worry about that. And remember, I'm just holding down the button and doing a firm sort of two second or prolonged press. That will take you back to the screen. So there you go. You've configured your Smarty Cam 3 Sport. And so now, once your system starts, your camera will start, depending on what your parameters are, and you'll be able to record your session. And I found that to be as easy as anything. But there's a few other things that I wanted to be able to point out on here before we go back to Rich Studio 3. And that is a few of the settings that I want to be able to focus on on the device itself, because there's a few on here which I think are very important to be able to set up. So area number three, configuring the device on the device. Now. What we're going to do here is we're going to click on this menu button here. And I'm going to be presenting with a series of options that are available. The video file itself, GPS status, um, the tracks that we've just loaded, uh, the update that we've just used. But what we're going to do is we're going to go into settings, because I think this is one of the most important areas to be. I'm going to click on the triangle to say OK. And there's a few bits and bobs that are on here. Now, the auto start and stop is very important if you're using this as a standalone to be able to tell the system when to start and stop. However, if you're using this as part of a connected AIM network and it's connected to a solo 2DL or a Evo 4S in my case, it'll start when the system starts recording. So it's important to know that if you're using it as a standalone to go there. A few other things that are on here, um, you've got um, uh, one of the uh, most useful, uh, which I will say is, um, as I scroll through these, uh, do, do, do. Sorry, I shouldn't sing on the uh, on a, on a <laughs> webinar. Uh, the overlay we just sorted out. Um, what we're doing is we are going to flip over. Now, flip over. I'm not necessarily going to press, but if you're somebody who's mounted your smarty cam upside down, you want to be able to flip over your particular video so that you can actually see it. So that's a very useful thing to be able to have. Similarly, if I scroll down. There's a few on here I really want to be able to focus on as well, which is if we look at um, exposure. Now, this one I think is really important because uh, it often gets missed, but the uh, system will allow you to be able to set where the system uses sort of like an exposure setting, like a spot filter or spot meter, I should say, to be able to control what's going on here. So as an example, if I click on here and I click on select, which is the triangle, you notice now that it's a, um, a red triangle that is around the whole screen. Now, that's useful if you're using it in a situation. I used it on an open wheel formula car. If you use it on a go-kart, 
this is fine to have. But if it's inside a vehicle, you might want to be able to specify where the light's coming in. It could be your windscreen. And so don't adjust the exposure based upon the interior of your car. Base the exposure based upon where the window is in your vehicle. So for example, what we can do here is if, for example, we click here on the change, notice that it now moves around the screen. So if you happen to be choosing where the windscreen is, you can move this around. So I'll give you a great example. Sorry, just keep clicking on this. If you were driving, for example, the, um, I drove a Fun Cup and it was a Fun Cup car. It was the um, Volkswagen Beetle body. So the windscreen was very square. You had a lot of screen real estate at the top and the bottom, and you had a, th a thin strip that you looked out of. That's where you'd want to be able to set your exposure because that where the light is coming, that's where the light is coming in. And so make sure you set all of these particular parameters. Now I'm not going to go through all of them, but that one I would recommend setting. And then the other one I would also recommend setting, which is equally important, and it's very straightforward, is if I click on and down until I get to it, make sure you have set, I'm going to flip past it about three times before I get to the, the is it's called system time. So I've flipped past it. Um, and where are we? Oh, it's got mark. System time. Click on select. Make sure you've set the right time, date, and everything. Now, this is very useful for a simple reason that if you are looking at your data files later on in Race Studio 3 analysis, you want to make sure that you have set the right time of day as to when you're recording. Now, I system reset this before we sat down. So notice that despite the fact uh, that the date is, uh, um, well, the actual date is tomorrow, not today. Um, this needs to be adjusted and changed. And so this is the other thing I'd recommend you do on the device. But if you've done all of these things, I would argue at this point, you're ready to go and be able to start using the device. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flick the camera back. Hold on a second. You should be able to see me again. Hello, everyone. Um, and I'm going to bring us back to Race Studio 3 because the last thing I want to be able to show you is what the output of all of the new Race Studio 3 looks like um, based upon um, uh, the updated camera versus the previous camera. Because uh, I think it's important that everyone gets to appreciate are the differences and where the differences are and have a few sort of examples. And so the last part of today's webinar is actually showing you what these examples look like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click um, on Share. I'm going to click on Race Studio 3. I'm going to click on Share. And now we're back to the page um, where we were previously. So I should be able to, uh, just a quick yes on the chat would be lovely. Um, if you're seeing Race Studio 3 again, um, which would be wonderful. I think uh, um, hopefully I uh, am presenting. Well, if I'm not, do let me know so I don't ramble on for 20 minutes on a blank page. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take you through some examples. Thank you so much. Um, many of you are responding at the same time. So what I'm going to do is instead of being in here where we've done our configuration and setup, I'm going to go up here to analysis and I'm going to open it up and I'm going to show you these files. Now, these are the last time I ran, but the most important thing about these is that this is where I ran um, with both a SmartyCam 2.1 GP and a SmartyCam 3 Sport running at the same time. And so I'm just going to give you a few examples of some of these that are here. So if I double click and open this one up here, you'll see that it loads up this RF07 driver analysis. This is my driver analysis. This gives me information about what I've been doing, time distance, all the stuff is here. Now, in the last webinar, we talked about why is data and video analysis together so important. And the reason was, was that it allowed you to be able to see, which took out the final piece of mystery that exists in terms of analysis. But the beauty of Race Studio 3 is if you're running two cameras, it will show you two cameras linked to the file. And so here you can see Race Studio 3. Sorry, <laughs> you can see Race Studio 3. Here you can see the Smarty Cam 3 Sport which is here, and you can see the, um, uh, uh, what is this one called again? <laughs> Sorry, uh, the SmartyCam 2.1 GP. So this is the previous version that I have. So first and foremost, you can see the difference in terms of some of the aspects of the lap here, which are good. So I'm going to put on mute so it doesn't make tons of noise while we're doing the demo. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this through for a minute because I want to show you some of the differences you can see. Now, the first thing is, is the ability to be able to handle light. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, there are areas here 
um, you know, there's a bit of, uh, you know, adjustment. I may change where the actual uh, focus is on this one going forward, but let me just play them anyway, so you can see these side by side. So first and foremost, the first thing I want to be able to make sure that we're all looking at in this particular instance, and hold on, let me go back to the best lap at the beginning, um, and is that we have the ability to be able to see this here. So notice this is moving. What this is doing is this is sort of working out how I'm doing versus my best lap. So the predictive lap time is showing up on the SmartyCam 3 GP Sport, which is nice. Whereas here in the SmartyCam 2.1, we're not seeing that particular area. So notice I did a better job exiting that corner and all of a sudden. So again, if you're there, you're like, oh my goodness, I've done a much better job of exiting this corner. I felt great. Something was going on. What was happening? Now, interestingly, um, this person's cheering as to how good a corner I did there. As you can see, they're delighted with the fact that I'm two, uh, 12 uh, hundredths of a second up. And so if I click on that, you can see, do I uh, keep it going throughout the lap? And that's what's really important. We can see how things ebb and flow as we go through. Other things we're also seeing, and I'll just sort of play it for a little bit longer. Look at how much shaking's on the right-hand side to the left-hand side. That's the new CMOS sensor being able to adjust for the shake. Now, some people have commented, has that something to do with the mount? That there might be a little bit to do with that. But in many respects, there's a lot to do with the fact that there's a new sensor in here adjusting because both cameras felt um, as um, sort of sturdy and firm as they needed to. And remember, the bullet camera is much lighter. It's tiny in comparison. And so as a result, this shake shouldn't be this much shake coming from a smaller device. Um, versus the larger one might be more susceptible to movement on its mount. So a few things that are here do you have to have a look at. This was just one of the overlays, and I thought you might all like to be able to have a look at what some of the other over overlays look like. So here's another one that we have. And notice how this is going to be one of the challenges I have requested to AIM that we can pick the video that we see if we've got two uh, running on a particular device. Um, but at the same time, if I turn off, um, which I believe is this one, we go back to this. Notice how it's a different setup I have here. It's a different configuration. But remember, I was talking earlier on about um, the uh, setup with the grid. Notice here how these are slightly misaligned. And so you're like, oh, I should have done a better job. Should have had the, gri uh, the, the grid loaded. So again, if I click on this one, you can see that uh, oh, I just started the lap right at the beginning. So if I scroll back, you can see that the graphics look smoother, they look better. Um, and if I made this larger, if I, for example, click on here, um, you can click on the video itself and you can see that in more. So I realized that what I've done is, excuse me a second, what I'm gonna do is I am going to, in this instance, stop the share and I'm going to share a grin again. But what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna share the entire screen. So you can see that as I click here, I can choose the video I wanna be able to watch. And in this instance, if I pick here, I can now see the full video and I can see the high definition quality of what we're looking at. And so you can see here um, how much clearer the graphics are in representation and you can see the new graphic overlays as well. So there's a lot of things to be able to have a look at here uh, as we go through. And so with that, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, really sort of end the webinar and see if there are any questions that anyone has as we're going through. And feel free to write the question in the chat box and we can uh, address that as we go forward. Was such, such a uh, sort of a, a, a limited group today. I think that uh, questions uh, may be something we can handle in emails and everything after that. And so um, just out of interest, is there anything anyone wants to see in a little bit more detail with a few minutes left? Otherwise, uh, we'll give you a little bit more time back. <laughs> 